Jesus, are you okay? I'm full of sorrow. My, my heart is filled with sadness. Stay here and, and keep watch. Guess we should keep... Guys, we're meant to keep watch. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Maybe it's okay just to close our eyes for a second. Abba, Father, you can do all things. Let me not have this cup of suffering. Take it from me. But do what you want, not what I want. Why are you asleep? I told you to keep watch. Pray. The, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. My heart, my heart is full of sadness. We, we can do better this time. We should pray. Abba, Father, you can do all things. Take this cup from me. But do what you want, not what I want. You're still asleep. My heart is it's filled with sadness. I, I must go and pray. Please try and stay awake. Just so tired, oh, boy. It's so late. But Jesus is really sad. We can try again. Mm. We should. Mm, yeah, we should. <laughs> Abba, Father, take this cup from me. All things are possible for you. You can do all things. But do what you want, not what I want. Enough, enough. The, the hour has come. Arise. We must go. Judas! Ah, oh, teacher! Come get it, boys! Ah, let's get it! You come at me with clubs and swords as if I was some kind of criminal. Every day I've been in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me then. But this must happen so that the scriptures are fulfilled. Come on, let's go! My name's Liv and we're going to sing a song together about our holy God who welcomes us in as friends when we trust in Jesus. This is a call and response song, but I don't have anyone here to help me. So when I sing a line, you're going to sing it back to me really loudly. Are you ready?
Hello and welcome to Sunday Stories for Families. This week we're going to look at another true story from the Bible and this time it's from Mark's Gospel. Mark chapter 14 starting at verse 32. If you have a Bible at home you can go and get it so that we can read along together. If not, don't worry, the words will come up on the screen behind me. Mark chapter 14 verse 32. Jesus and his followers went to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his followers, sit here while I pray. Jesus told Peter, James and John to come with him. Then Jesus began to be very sad and troubled. He said to them, I am full of sorrow. My heart is breaking with sadness. Stay here and watch. Jesus walked a little further away from them. Then he fell on the ground and prayed. He prayed that if possible, he would not have this time of suffering. He prayed, Abba, Father, you can do all things. Let me not have this cup of suffering, but do what you want, not what I want. Then Jesus went back to his followers. He found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, why are you sleeping? You could not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you will not be tempted. Your spirit wants to do what is right, but your body is weak. Again, Jesus went away and prayed the same thing. Then he went back to the followers. Again, he found them asleep because their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say to Jesus. After Jesus prayed a third time, he went back to his followers. He said to them, you are still sleeping and resting? That's enough. The time has come for the Son of Man to be given to sinful people. Get up. We must go. Here comes the man who has turned against me. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas came up. Judas was one of the twelve followers. He had many people with him. They were sent from the leading priests, the teachers of the law, and the older Jewish leaders. Those with Judas had swords and clubs. Judas had planned a signal for them. He had said, The man I kiss is Jesus. Arrest him and guard him while you lead him away. So Judas went to Jesus and said, Teacher, and kissed him. Then the men grabbed Jesus and arrested him. One of the followers standing near drew his sword. He struck the servant of the high priest with the sword and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said, You came to get me with swords and clubs as if I were a criminal. Every day I was with you teaching in the temple. You did not arrest me there. But all these have happened to make the scriptures come true. Then all of Jesus' followers left him and ran away. Today we're going to look at another true story from the Bible, this time from Mark's Gospel. Now Mark's Gospel is written by people who knew Jesus when he was alive on earth. They saw all the amazing things he did and they wrote them down so that we can read them. In Mark's Gospel, you can read lots of amazing, true stories about Jesus. We see the things he did, like calming storms, casting out evil, feeding the 5,000, healing the sick, and even forgiving sins. But in our story today, Jesus is deeply troubled. He's filled with sadness. Jesus is so powerful So whatever's troubling him and upsetting him so much, well, it must be a really big deal. When Jesus prays in our story, he says, Abba, Father. So he's praying to God, his Father. And then he says, you can do all things. Let me not have this cup of suffering, but do what you want, not what I want. The thing that is troubling Jesus so much is this cup of suffering. 
Now, there wasn't a real cup there, but the cup of suffering, it's a picture. It represents something. It represents God's punishment. The cup is a picture of God's punishment for sin. Sin is when we turn away from God and don't live the way he designed us to. But we decide to live our own way. When we sin and live like this, we do lots of wrong things, lots of bad things. And every time we do this, we deserve to be punished by God. So if you hit your sister, well then you deserve the punishment. Or if you said no to your mum when she asked you to do something, then you deserve a punishment. Or if you tuck something that didn't belong to you, or if you swore or lied, all these things, they deserve a punishment from God. Now imagine if all the punishments that everyone deserves for all the times they've sinned, all the times they've ignored God and decided to live their own way and done bad things. Imagine if all those punishments were put into this cup. Imagine drinking this cup and taking all of those punishments at once. It would be awful. And that's what this cup of suffering represents. Jesus was troubled because he knew that when he died on the cross, he was going to have to take upon himself all of the punishments from God that we deserve all at once. Jesus was really troubled and he didn't want this. He prayed, let me not have this cup of suffering. But he also prayed, but do what you want, not what I want. Jesus prayed lots to God about this, but his friends and followers, they didn't. Do you remember? They kept falling to sleep. But when people came, bad people came to take Jesus away. Well, Jesus reacted very differently from his friends, didn't he? One of Jesus' friends started to fight the people who came to arrest Jesus. He took out his sword to protect Jesus. They weren't going to let him be taken. But Jesus stopped them and he said that these people had come like this to fulfil the scriptures. And he follows them, he goes with them. Jesus is so powerful, he could have just walked away. He wouldn't even need to fight. But by not fighting or walking away, Jesus wasn't just choosing to follow these guards, these bad people, but he was actually choosing to follow God, to do what God wanted, even though it meant he was going to have to drink this cup of suffering. And remember what this cup of suffering represents. It represents all the punishments that we deserve for our sin for all the wrong things we have done when we've turned away from God and decided to live our own way. Imagine all those punishments that we deserve. And not just us, but all the people Jesus has died for. And not just those people alive now, but those people Jesus died for who were alive in the past and those people Jesus has died for who will be alive in the future. It's hard to get our heads around, but that's a lot of punishment. Jesus was deeply troubled, which makes sense. But he chose to do it anyway. If Jesus didn't choose to go to the cross and take the punishments that we deserve, well, then we would have to face God's anger. We would have to take the punishments that we deserve. Jesus is so amazing. And this is the one of the it's one of the many things we remember at Easter. We remember what Jesus did, taking away the punishment that we deserve for the wrong things we have done. And we praise and we thank Jesus for that. You can spend some time doing that now, by yourself or with your family, by praying to God, thanking Jesus for what he did. Then there are some questions in the description below for you to go through with your families. It's been great having you here this week at Sunday Stories for Families. Join us again next week when we'll be looking more at King Jesus and all that he did when he was alive on earth. 
We'll also be making something together. You might need to get your gardening gloves ready. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see you then. But for now, goodbye.